your faces as we are gathered together here this morning to worship the one and only true God. Um, that song, You Are Beautiful Beyond Description, always gets me um, too marvelous for words. We, we're speechless sometimes um, in, in awe of God. Um, so please don't forget anything that was shared this morning here thus far. Um, it kind of ties in with the message here today. And when I heard all of your, your sharing in, the, in uh, Sunday school, I almost wish I would have changed my message title a little bit, <clears throat> but that's fine. My message title is When God is Silent, and um, maybe a better title would have been something about two worlds or something like that, but anyway. But sometimes God seems silent to us, and what do we do during those times? And we'll just be touch on that. From the dawn of creation, this world has been crying out for hope. For a hero to save us, we long for the supernatural. Some of you may recognize that verse. Um, it's from a contemporary song from the Newsboys. And this verse has just kind of been spinning in my mind. Sometimes it gets stuck in there and it just hits replay. But as I was preparing for a message, this verse came back to me, and, it, and it's just been there. And a verse from the Bible that I want to share with you this morning on the onset here is Ecclesiastes 3.11, where it says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. God has set eternity in the hearts of each person. In this song, I'm not quite sure what all the writer was referring to. Uh, from the dawn of creation, this world has been crying out for hope, for a hero to save us. We long for the supernatural. And it implies to me that each and every one, every person, everywhere, all across the world, knows that there is something bigger than themselves. Something bigger than, than what we are, who we are. God has set eternity in the human heart. So everyone knows that there is something more. I want to read a, a quote from Greg Laurie. He says this, and I'm going to quote this. He says it well. We are we were created to worship every person we were created to worship and when you get down to it every person on earth does worship we don't all worship the god of heaven but we all worship someone or something it may be a sports figure an entertainer or someone else it may be a possession but everyone bows at some kind of altar even atheists worship Skeptics worship, Republicans and Democrats worship, Independents worship, everyone everywhere worships. It's a fundamental drive of life and one of the unique distinctions of humanity. The Bible says that God has placed eternity in the human heart, and that simply means that God has put within us a sense and awareness that there is more. There is a drive to bow down to something, to pay homage to something, to worship something. So we are all created with this desire to worship something, and we do. I tend to be intrigued by greatness. I don't know how you guys are. Um, amazing feats uh, that people do. It's something that, I don't know, it, it speaks of something almost the impossible that humans do. Um, I don't have a Guinness Book of World Records, but when you look through that, it, it, people do amazing things. Uh, and we're intrigued by that. I'm intrigued by a person that can eat 63 hot dogs in 10 minutes. That's just, it, it's phenomenal. Um, I'm intrigued by a boy from China last year that was juggling three Rubik's Cubes and solved them five minutes. Had two in the air and he was turning one. 
amazing feats. We're intrigued by things of that nature. And I think it speaks to the fact that we are drawn to something greater than ourselves. We are fans of sports teams and we follow people. Why? Not because we hope they fail, but we, but we hope they accomplish something, something great, something big. They win a championship. We, we root for people because we hope they win. We are intrigued by greatness, but nothing compares to the greatness of God. We stand on wonder of God. I want to take you to two worship scenes this morning in the book of Exodus, just to, for my message here this morning. You have a good and a bad. Um, we'll go with the good one first. Two worship scenes. The first one takes place in Exodus 34. We're going to start there. <clears throat> and what we have here is is a scene where this takes place. Moses was, a, was up on Mount Sinai the second time. So this was the second time he was up there. Second set of, of Ten Commandments, the stone tablets. He comes back down. This is the time where Moses had to put a veil over his face when he talked to the people because his face was shining so brightly. Exodus 34, verse 8. I'm going to read from verses 8 to 14. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. This was still on the mountain. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us. Even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all the people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out before you the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. For you shall destroy their altars and break their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So Moses was talking to God, and, and this was a dialogue between God and Moses. <clears throat> so Moses come down from the mountain, and he's talking to the children of Israel, and, and Moses' face is shining brightly. So obviously the children of Israel take note of this. Exodus 35, two verses, 20 and 21. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing, and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service and for all its holy garments. So they're, they're making this beautiful place, this tabernacle, a place where they're going to meet uh, and meet with God. Turn to Exodus 40. And the chapters in between here talk about how they were supposed to make it and, and who was responsible for what. So Exodus 40 and verse 33b, it says, So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up above the tabernacle, the children of Israel go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. But the, for the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Now, I don't know what you get from this picture, but this paints a picture where you say, wow. Um, 
this cloud um, is a is a well known symbol of God's presence, His His being there. <clears throat> God is up close and personal. They feel and see His very presence. He is there. When the cloud moved, they moved. It was visible. It says it was visible in the sight of all the camp. So everywhere in the camp, everyone was able to see this cloud. It was a cloud by day, and it was light during the night. And commentaries say that it was bright enough that in time, at times they would have traveled during the night, and it was enough light that they could see to walk <clears throat> and travel during the night. This cloud was a constant reminder that God is there. God has a covenant with them, and God is near. Whenever they doubted, they could always just look and know that the cloud was there. This is a close connection and we all long to have with God. His direction was clear. Uh, this is where we enjoy life. Uh, this is amazing. This is those high, high parts, the mountaintop experiences. We're going to close the curtain there, and we're going to open it to another scene. This was actually just a few chapters before. <clears throat> Again, the setting here was Moses was on Mount Sinai the first time he was up there. If we would turn to Exodus 32, I'm just going to read here and we get this scene. Exodus 32, we're going to be starting in verse 1. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the golden from their hand, and he fashioned it into with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, This is our God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. When they rose early the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down, for your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them, and they made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? And why should the Egyptians speak and say, he brought them out, the, out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he had, which he said he would do to his people. And Moses turned and went down to the mountain, and the two tablets of testimony were in his hand. And the tablets were written on both sides, and on one side and on the other they were written. Now the tablets were the word of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not a noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. 
So it was, as soon as he came near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountains. Then he took the calf, which he had made, burned it in the fire, ground it into powder, and he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. We have a total different scene here. Um, a fabricated God. We see have chaos. As I said in the beginning, we all worship something. You know, to us it seemed a little bit absurd that they would make this calf, this molded image, and say, this is the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. That this God did not part the waters. This God did not was not part of the miraculous plagues. This God, yeah, part of the waters and let the children of Israel walk through on dry ground and in return drown the Egyptian army. How absurd. So I had to look at my own life. So 40 days, Moses was up there with God and that quickly, the children of Israel were like, we need something to lead us. Um, this, this guy, we don't know what happened to Moses. Um, so we need to make something. We need to fabricate something <clears throat> to lead us to be our God. Sometimes we get those dry spells. And it was mentioned about Elijah. Three years sitting there by the brook. He'd get his food every day. Three years he waited I don't know what the communication was between him and God, but he could have thought, man, I'm not doing much here. Or where is God? But God was providing for him. What do we do today when, when we're in those times of, of silence? Or when we're in those fire trials that we had in our Sunday school lesson? How do we respond? What do we do? There's something about silence that is a bit uncomfortable, wouldn't you say? If I would be without warning, I would just quit talking up here. Um, it would be maybe about 10 seconds you'd like, uh, is this guy all right? What's going on? Or if you're in a group of people and nobody talks, you're like, hmm, what's going on here? Somebody say something. Um, We'd say this 20 minute rule. But you have to really know a person. Um, if you are comfortable with them sitting in silence, um, I can sit in silence with my wife. It's okay. But still, even after a while, I'm like, what is she thinking? We, talk, we know about silence. Um, but in those times when. Uh, we don't really necessarily feel God that close or we haven't heard from him. What do we do? Do we fabricate something? Do we look for something to else other than to God to get us through? Just a question that, I, that was really on my mind. Just a few points here that I'd like to share with you this morning. First, <clears throat> understanding God's silence. First of all, God is the ultimate authority. God is the great I am. There is no other God with a capital G. He doesn't really need to give us an explanation. He doesn't really owe us any explanation of what is going on. Number two, his silence can be a, a way of of drawing us closer to him. Thinking about the story of Lazarus, Mary and Martha. When Jesus heard that Lazarus died, he waited several more days before he went. So when he gets to Mary and Martha, they said, well, Jesus, if you would have been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. But Jesus' silence was a way to show Mary and Martha a greater picture of who he is death and resurrection 
He brought Lazarus back from the dead. He showed them that he is more powerful than what the earthly death is. It drew them into a deeper relationship with them. Number three, God's silence can require us to take a step back, to stop. Um, I'm sure God was doing a work in the life of Elijah when he was there at the brook. But sometimes it, we, we get so caught up in the here and now. We're so tunnel focused that we can hardly see other things. From where I'm standing, you could almost convince me the earth is flat. I can only see it's a flat earth. Um, we could go until we drop off the edge. But we know that it is not. We know that when you zoom out and you get a picture from way out, you will obviously know that the earth is round. It's a ball. It's, it's round. We know that. Sometimes God is, is asking us, just to zoom out and see the big picture. God uses those times for us to, to think about life. Martin Luther's wife, Catherine, saw him discouraged and unresponsive for some time. One day she dressed in black mourning clothes. Luther asked her why. Someone has died, she said. Who, Luther asked. Well, it seems, Catherine said, that God must have died. Luther got her point. Since God hadn't died, he needed to stop acting as if he had. <clears throat> Five things to do when you find yourself in a time of silence, in a time when maybe you don't see the cloud or feel the cloud. First of all, I would say examine your life. Make sure you don't have unconfessed sin. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love for me. <clears throat> the first thing would always be to examine our life. Do I have unconfessed sin? Do I have something in my life that is creating that wall? Number two, remember what God has done. If we could just do that. That was a problem with the children of Israel. They seemingly had a, a very good forgetter. He brought them out of Egypt. Um, he was there for them. He saved them out of that bondage but yet how quickly they forgot so we can always remember what God has done and from where he has brought us to where we are at now number three would be to focus on the greatness of God and that is something we can do there's only one God there's no one above him only the Savior wears a crown in awesome wonder he reigns forever for we know the greatness of our God. His power is endless, and he lives within us. We know the greatness of our God. A few more lines of that song. <clears throat> God is an awesome God. Let's never forget that. If somehow we could separate what we know in our head and our emotions, we would probably never have a bad day in our life. That song that Reagan led this morning, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, one of the phrases says, we should never be discouraged. Why? Because we know that God is great. Focus on the greatness of God. Another thing that we, can, we always go to is, is creation. If we observe creation around us, we know that there is something greater than ourselves. I mean, after all, we can have 50 degrees one day, and two days later, we can have several inches of snow. Um, just amazing how God in, uses weather. And I mean, even though we may not like the snow all that well, we have to think it was pretty, pretty much wow. 
um, how he can do that with with the right temperature God can change raindrops into snowflakes focus on the greatness of God number four keep on worshiping just keep on worshiping keep singing keep praying the Bible story that came to my mind was in Acts 16 the picture I got here Paul and Silas they freed a, a, a girl from an evil spirit and and her owners were making money off of her and <clears throat> They saw that that with the evil spirit gone, their means of, of making money was gone. And so got, they, they got this whole crowd worked up about this. And it says the magistrates or the officials stripped them of their clothes, beat them and put them in the inner dungeon and put their feet in stocks. Now the inner dungeon, I'm pretty sure, was dark and dreary and their feet tickled and they couldn't scratch them. Um, but what did they do? They didn't forget God. They sang and they prayed. They kept worshiping. And they didn't quit because they knew God. Number five would be to remember the cross and the grave. In Exodus, God showed his presence by a, a physical cloud, one that was big enough. I mean, it showed his presence. Today, we have the cross and we have an empty grave. They are there. They are always there for us to see. To They're there for us. We can always go there. The cross, a symbol of God's immeasurable love for us. The empty grave is hope for the future, knowing that the enemy is defeated. Goliath is dead. The enemy is defeated, and we can walk in victory. <clears throat> Let us never fabricate false gods to try to get us through. It's been mentioned about Mount Carmel, and, and that was another story I could have used of how chaos and how they were cutting themselves, and Elijah just calmly, bring on more water. And he calmly just prays, and God sends fire, his presence. He revealed who he was. <clears throat> I want to leave you with a psalm. It's one that speaks kind of what I've been saying here this morning, kind of the ups and downs in life. Psalm 42. And just listen carefully as, as I believe David just kind of goes and, and he summarizes what his life is and what it has been. Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? <clears throat> my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great possession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you, even from distant Hermon, the source of the Jordan from the land of Mount Miser. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. O oh God, my rock, I cry, why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff, where is this God of yours? Why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? 
I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Let's bow forward a prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning, we just bow our heads and we thank you that you're an awesome God. You are holy. You are righteous. You are amazing. And we just come to you, and lest we never forget, Father, just keep us, remind us. May we always be able to look to the cross and to the grave and remember whose side we're on and what we have in the future. We just pray a blessing upon each one here. We pray this through Christ. Amen. I'll just open it up if anyone.